It's a stroll report for a telescope. Oh, look at that. Where did you come from? This telescope isn't from space, as you might have gathered. It's from my employer, First Light Optics, that have kindly loaned me it for a while just to play with. They didn't mention making a video, but that you know they know what I'm like, so they know that I'm going to make lots of videos about anything I get my hands on. Um, but I can't be unbiased, so this isn't a review; it's an overview, and I'll try and keep to the pure facts and not try and I'll try my hardest not to inject my personal opinion because I can't be unbiased about this telescope because I work for First Light Optics. Now let's just go over what this telescope is. So, Flow, we have our own brand of telescopes called Stella Myra, which are refractors, and Stella Lyra, which are reflectors. And this is a 90mm ED triplet, so this is a Stella Myra. And optically, it has three elements as triplets do. I'll just hold this like a bazooka to show you. Each air to glass surface is fully multi coated. And one of, those, one of those elements is ED, and it's the equivalent of FPL 53 glass, which is also known as synthetic fluorite, like what the really high-end premium refractors contain. Now, it doesn't disclose what that glass type is, only that it's the equivalent of FPL 53, but the proof will be in the pudding when we test this in part two. Now, what does this retail for? It retails for $12.99 in the UK. Flow deliver worldwide, so it's not just limited to the UK. Uh, so as mentioned, glass-wise, it's a triplet apo, and it comes with a stroll report, which is an optical test of the quality of the optics. Each one of these will come with this for peace of mind regarding things like astigmatism, chromatic aberration, spherical aberration. So you can be assured that it won't have astigmatism and that chromatic and spherical aberration will be negligible. And it's guaranteed that you'll have a strahl of 0.95 or higher and just to give you an idea, the stroll ratio is a scale between zero and one, where one is optical perfection and zero is the opposite. So when you're getting up to, what's this one? This is 0.966. You're getting pretty close to one there, aren't we? So it's pretty close to perfection there. And this is serial number 20. So this is the 20th one made of these. So carbon fiber as well in at that price and everything CNC machined on it, all the dovetail CNC machined, it's solid billet aluminium there. It's gonna be a shame when I pop this on the Exos 2 that grips it via a bolt because it's gonna tear into that. So I may have to put something between the dovetail and my clamp so it doesn't get marked up and maybe a safety bolt there so when it's so when you undo it, it doesn't slide through and fall on the floor because I don't want this expensive telescope landing on my floor. I'll cry. CNC machined rings as well with M6 holes threaded on them as well as the carry handle on top. So there's plenty of room to place accessories on here. Comes with a finder scope shoe with two screws to attach that. Even the knobs on the Folks are all CNC, all the little knobs for tightening things up are all CNC. Focuser comes with compression rings throughout, brass compression rings, so they're not gonna mark up any accessories like a diagonal or a camera nose piece or reduce a flattener. Now the focuser is a 2.5 inch rack and pinion. No discernible play even when it's all the way out. It's just solid and it's smooth. It's not overly loose, so it gives you kind of like confidence that it's gonna carry a lot of weight. I know that's my opinion, but I honestly think anyone would have the same opinion about this focuser. And it's got a built-in rotator as well, so you can frame your camera. 
without having to turn the camera around. So yeah, it's also got, if I slide the dew shield down, which is actually quite firm to do, it's got little bumpers to stop collision between the back of the dew shield and the, the first CNC ring. So that's quite a nice touch, I think. Weight wise, 3.3 kilograms. And length wise, I've got a tape measure here with the dew shield all the way out. We are looking at, I'll do metric and imperial. Yeah, it's about 50.5 centimeters long and 19 and a half inches. And if I slide the dew shield back, we measure. So this is as short as it will go. We're looking at 47 centimeters or 18 and a half inches. So there's not a huge amount of travel on the dew shield. It's kind of what it looks like. So dew bands may be important for when it's very damp. And whilst we're talking about dew bands, it's important to measure your circumference of the dew shield so you can get the correct one. So we'll get a measurement on that as well. We are looking at 40 centimetres Fifteen and a half inches around the circumference there for fitting a dew band. Whew, what have I missed off? There's other things. Yeah, focal length. So natively, this is 540 millimeters focal length, and it comes with. It doesn't come with a flattener reducer, but you can buy a flattener reducer for this, which I've actually got, and I'll talk about that in the next video and that brings it down to 432 millimeters. And the F ratio goes from F6 natively down to F4.5, which is pretty quick by anyone's standards. So I'll be testing out initially with, photographically I'll be testing it with a Fuji crop sensor. So APS-C size sensor, and we'll look at any vignetting and what the stars look like in the corners and any of vibrations. Uh, so we'll test that. I'll be testing it optically, visually with a diagonal as well. See if it reaches focus okay with a diagonal, what the views are like, in my opinion. And if I can get my hands on a full frame camera, I'll even whack that on there and just check the claimed 44 millimeter image circle and whether that's fully illuminated or not. So yep, lots of tests to come, but that was an initial look. It's stormy outside, so I don't know when I'll get the chance to do that. So I just wanted to bring you something because it's kind of hot off the press, this telescope. And I kind of wanted to have the first video information about it. So I'm sorry that I couldn't end this video with um, images from this, but that will be in part two. I just wanted to get some information out there about this new telescope that's just come out very recently and uh, stand by for more information about it. Okay, catch you on the next video.